China and India were to clash in the near future and war broke out, India would most likely lose in just 10 days. This is not my opinion. This is Pravin Sani, ex-Indian Army and Editor-in-Chief at Force, which is a national security and aerospace news magazine. In 2022, Sani authored a book titled The Last War, How AI Will Shape India's Final Showdown with China, where he points out a few gaping holes on how China has made significant progress in integrating AI into their military system and how India is still struggling to. The story starts off dramatically with China sneak attacking India with an army of robots, swarms of assassination drones and other cyber attack. Although this book has references to real world events and threats and goes into great detail about different aspects of such a war, it still belongs in the fiction section. But it raises an important question. Where is India currently in terms of integrating AI into its defense systems? Is it already happening? If yes, what are these tools we have built? For you engineers out there, how can you get more involved in building defense tech for the Indian military? Now, AI in the military sounds pretty cool and powerful, but it's not only going to be used on missions and on-field activities, but very much in complex running of the entire defense system as well. Some of the domains where AI tech can directly be applied are surveillance at the borders, supply chain management for artillery, combat and training, command and control, and reconnaissance. AI integration will help military reduce casualties, identify threats faster, increase accuracy and crunch data to arrive at faster and more informed decisions in situations where time is of the utmost value. But India is not alone in the quest for AI-powered military. The US Department of Defense budgeted $1.8 billion for the research and development of AI in the defense system. They even appointed a chief digital and artificial intelligence officer in their defense system. So they're pretty serious about this. They even have a multi-decade phase-wise plan on how AI and robotics can be integrated into every facet of the US military operations. Russia, on the other hand, used AI-powered drones in their recent invasion of Ukraine and are deploying remotely piloted tanks like the Uran-9 and Vihar. In the words of Vladimir Putin, whoever becomes the leader in the sphere of artificial intelligence rules the world. AI has already entered the military and defense space in a significant way and India is pretty serious about it as well. You can hear it not from me, but the Prime Minister himself. Our goal is that Artificial intelligence के कम से कम 25 product विकसित किए जाएं। In 2022, India established the Defence Artificial Intelligence Council or DAIC, led by Defence Minister Rajnath Singh. And to develop these 25 products, Prime Minister Modi was talking about, India has created Defence AI Project Agency or DIPA with an annual project of 100 crores. In addition to these systems, individual services are also cranking up their efforts towards integrating AI into Indian defense systems. The Indian Navy, for example, has created an AI and big data center of excellence in INA Walsura in Jamnagar. They already have 30 ongoing AI projects in the domains of maritime domain awareness, perimeter security, decision making, predictive inventory management, etc. The Indian Army has also established the AI Center for Excellence at the Military College for Telecommunications Engineering. Moreover, the Defense Research and Development Organization or DRDO has application-oriented AI research going on at two dedicated labs, Center for Artificial Intelligence Research or CAIR and DRDO Young Scientist Laboratory both located in Bengaluru. The Army Training Command is developing its own simulation-based technology called WARDEC, which stands for War Game Research and Development Center. It's the first of its kind training center in India that utilizes VR and AI to train our forces in warlike scenarios. On July 11, 2022, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh launched 75, not 25 as Modi said in the video, but 75 newly developed AI products at the first ever symposium and exhibition on artificial intelligence in defense in New Delhi. For example, the SAPO system, which is basically an unmanned ground vehicle that can detect ground mines and mark them with an illuminating spray that can be seen in the dark as well. Silent Sentry is an AI robot mounted on a rail that can be used for surveillance along border lines. It can also be attached to a loaded gun that is auto-fired during intrusions. The Indian Army has deployed 140 AI-based surveillance systems to get live feeds from China and Pakistan borders. 
At the time this video is being made, the Indian defense is already using AI-powered tech in facial recognition, language translation, remotely operated weapon stations, robotic mine detectors, and intrusion detection systems. Clearly a lot that India is doing to amp up its military with the power of AI. All this sounds very impressive, but there's still a long way to go. Yes, we've been able to incorporate AI into some of our military tech, but considering how far we've progressed in AI over the last few years, we haven't fully applied its potential. You can argue and say it's a pretty fast growing field and the military will eventually catch up with the pace of technological advancements. But on the flip side, there are papers like this that say that the Indian defense has rather been slow or inefficient in adopting AI-based tech in its most advanced form. Regardless of public opinion, one thing is clear. AI in the military is a space that is open for innovation and ideas. And as an engineer, you can directly create an impact here over the next few years. As an engineer, there are two main ways you can have a career in defense tech. One is by joining a defense public sector union or DPSU. These are organizations like the Ministry of Defense or Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and DRDO. The way to get a job in these organizations at a good position is to appear for the graduate aptitude test in engineering or the GATE exam and secure a good score. And this is after you're done with your B.Tech or M.Tech. There are maybe just 160 vacancies for engineers every year, so it gets very competitive. Second is by working at a private company or a startup that specializes in defense technology. There's Tonbo Imaging, IROV, Optimized Electrotech, Big Bang Boom Solutions, and a few more that are involved in this field. A quick Google search can help with what else is out there. At DPSUs, one starts out with a standard salary of 56,100 rupees per month and work your way upwards. And at a startup, it can go even higher based on your skills and negotiations. A few years ago, Prime Minister Modi delivered a visionary speech at the Defence Expo that marked a turning point in India's journey towards harnessing the power of AI. Since then, there have been numerous signs of progress, but what truly sets India apart is the sense of urgency that now pervades the Ministry of Defence. You see, the roadmap initially outlined a goal of operationalizing 25 AI-based products into the military by 2024. Yet it's only 2023 and India has already surpassed the target with 40 products in place and around 30 more in development. This astonishing progress is no coincidence. The defence sector has opened its doors wider than ever, welcoming private players and startups to contribute to the development of cutting-edge military tech. By fostering a collaborative ecosystem that embraces innovation, India is setting a stage for a brighter and safer future. Lieutenant General Shantanu Dayal recently encapsulated the spirit of openness and ambition at the AI Def events, stating, My aim was to expose all of you to the vastness of requirement of AI in the Indian Army. And we'll be accepting all such proposals, all such ideas with open arms. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a call to action for all of us. Whether we are researchers, entrepreneurs, or simply curious minds, we have the opportunity to be a part of a transformative era that will reshape the landscape of global military. Till the next time, subscribe.